Yeah, I have a lot more of the adventures. Hi, my name is uh, Joel Franisich, and uh, we are here at Super Happy Dev House. This is uh, the 34th event. It's a party for uh, hackers and, and, uh, and thinkers, shdh.org, uh, come if, if you're interested. Um, anyway, I got started with programming, um, learning from my dad, who was um, an embedded systems engineer. Um, he uh, used to uh, program basically microcontrollers, tiny devices that did everything on one chip. And, I got started learning from him, uh, learning C, and uh, from there I went on and learned Perl to write my own little uh, auction site, and uh, these days I really enjoy programming in Ruby and Python. Hello, my name is Joshua Neal. I'm working on a project here. This is an RGB LED interface to an Arduino board using an iSquared C GPIO device. The Arduino is controlling it using this device. It's only using two pins, even though the device requires three I.O. pins in order to control it. So where's the, where's the Arduino? The Arduino is this board in the middle. This is a board Arduino from Adafruit Industries. So this project actually will be a part of a course I'll be teaching at Tech Shop. So if anyone's interested in, in learning to interface through Arduino, sign up for my class. Where do they go for that? Tech Shop in Menlo Park. Uh, is there a website for that? TechShop.ws. Great. And tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got interested in these kinds of things. So I'm I'm a software engineer. Um, I basically did software for you know almost my whole life. I got interested in hardware at a young age, and I basically have been working on projects ever since. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm John Sanderson, um, I'm a programmer and I made this program called Colors for the DS. Um, it's a, a very basic uh, <laughs> painting program where you can just paint like this, change colors and paint. It's really easy to use, you can change the brush, brush, brush size like this, move around and paint and you can create re some really interesting Art, artworks with it. Um, here's here's one that I usually show off. Um, it's a cat that my friend made. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, and one of the the cool things with this program is that you can watch how the painting was made. So it records everything you do. Oh, no kidding. And you can see the process of, of creating it, creating this painting. And is it? Do you consider this a uh, like a vector or a raster type? It's actually something in between. It's the it's more of a vector-based uh, thing, and so you can uh, uh, re recreate the painting in a much higher resolution if you want to. So what I'm about to do is uh, a playback of here. I'll start it over. But this is a painting that I did with his software of a polar bear, and what it does is it saves all the brush strokes that you do so you can play it back and see exactly how the artist painted it. And um, this one probably takes a little while to uh, play back the whole way, but um, you get the idea after you know a couple more seconds here, I think. What's the speed factor here? How speeded up it is? Yeah, how exactly. How, it took me, you can see the bar down here is about a tenth of the way through. It probably took me six or eight hours to paint this thing because I was trying to make it as photorealistic as possible. So I can skip ahead here. I mean, you can see the general polar bear coming together. I can skip ahead and draw some fur on it. Draw some fur, draw that little cute guy on top, touch it up so it looks like a photo. And um, that was just my attempt to make the most photorealistic drawing I could. All done on this little device here. On the Nintendo DS using colors, his program. <laughs> That's amazing. Hi, I'm, I'm Steve. Uh, this is my robot. Um, this is a robot I built myself. Um, it's made out of the shell uh, from an Apple airport. Um, and I'm using a uh, Arduino a microcontroller, which is a very inexpensive, uh, very small computer um, that you can program yourself. And it's very easy. One of my uh, earliest experiences, I could, one of the you know, early experience I had that really enthused me and really got me excited was um, 
the when the movie Tron came out, um, I saw that in the theater when I was a kid and was just so completely excited and blown away by it that as soon as I got out, I rushed home and spent literally the rest of the afternoon and the entire night and stayed up all night um, writing my own uh, light cycle game. Um, and uh, my parents got were. Well, I wasn't terribly pleased that I stayed up all night, but at the end of the at the end of the day, I had you know, the, the next morning I had a completely working video game that my friends and I could play, um, and so that was really a lot of fun. Um, and uh, uh, just you know being excited uh, by that and, and having something to work towards um, really uh, um, taught me a lot uh, because I had to figure out how to do it myself. Uh, so. Um, I started really programming seriously when I was like 17, and I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to make a, a, a an RPG like a, a Final Fantasy game, and um, I just went on the internet at the time and you know Yahooed around. We didn't have the Google back then, and uh, looked for RPG engines, and I started making art, uh, and, and I couldn't find any programmers to do uh, the scripting for my game, so I started learning it piecemeal, and. That led directly to me becoming a professional programmer, and that's uh, changed my life incredibly. If I hadn't uh, just taken the time to uh, to look up um, on Yahoo like a few uh, scraps, uh, I wouldn't be the programmer I am today. Uh, and it's been uh, very awesome, a very awesome ride. And what kind of languages and tools and things do you use now? Uh, these days I use uh, Python, PHP, JavaScript, MySQL, uh, C... Um, hell, everything. <laughs> uh, back then, though, I was using a, a, a custom language called uh, Verge C, which was just uh, something uh, one of my friends made up. So, in fact, um, through that whole uh, experience, most of my friends uh, that I, I hold near and dear, uh, I met them through that entire game making experience. So. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, I'm Caroline Ortyski. I currently work in uh, networks in uh, communication signal analysis. And I've actually been programming since I was about nine years old. Um, my first program I wrote in BASIC, which was just a very simple little text game. And after that, I got interested in doing web development and in learning about networking. Um, and the way I did it is I literally taught myself. I would go to websites, I would look at the source code for it, and I would just kind of tweak it and modify it until I figured out what was going on behind the scenes and just kept reading and kept getting into it more and more and I took classes in high school that taught me C and C++ and Pascal and Java and all sorts of languages and um, went to college and I studied computer engineering. I'm currently getting my master's in computer engineering in networks and the great thing about programming, as you can see here in Super Happy Dev House, is you can just kind of do it on your own. You don't have to really take classes for it. You can pick up a book and learn it yourself. And there's a huge community that's super supportive that if you just say, I want to learn, people will be there to help you learn it and help you um, move along and grow as a programmer. And that's kind of how I got into it. So I hope you guys, uh, I don't know, get interested in it, or at least just try it out and see, because computers are actually a lot easier than people seem to think they are.